so jumping right into this video we are going to be getting into a nail design and this was a poll that I did and you all voted for me to do nail art so that is what I will be doing today I also want to talk about how I had to take a theory test today um, which I don't know if it went too well or not but we will be talking about that as well as doing some nail art and yeah let's just go ahead and get right into the video Hey you guys, so starting off, I actually, um, well first off, I wanna say that these are full cover tips. They were applied on a live that I did. If you didn't see the live, you can go back and watch that. I didn't do too much talking. I was just mainly applying these and I applied them with poly gel. And then when I washed them, like this white residue, I don't know what that is that happens under the actual nail tip. I don't know what that is. It, it comes like white and like you can scrape it off if you want to, but y'all will see in a minute what I'm talking about. But anyway, so I applied these tips or these full cover tips and then I just um, went ahead and filed the cuticle area down to how I want it to be. Um, I filed them just like well, I'm sealing the cuticles and I do that just how I would any acrylic set at the end when I am shaping. So just opposite. I'm doing that right now because we're only going to be using polish today to get this look. There is no acrylic needed. Now, I know, I know, I know y'all are looking at the thumbnail and y'all are like, this is not what we asked for. So I know that everybody asked me to do nail art or draw some nail art and y'all. I attempted to draw some nail art that looked really cool on Instagram. I tried it two times and it's so crazy because the first time I tried it, right? The first time I tried it actually came out really, really good, but it was just me practicing. So I did not record it. So then I tried again and it just did not come out the same. Like it looked completely wrong. I'm going to link a video up here of who I got the design from and what it's supposed to look like. And that is what I, was, I attempted to do on the pointer finger and the ring finger. And it was so funny because I was on Tip Top Shapes Live maybe two or three days ago. And she, one of her, um, one of her uh, co-workers or co-workers, somebody in the salon with her that works there as well. Another nail tech was like, she tried to do this design on somebody and um and it came out so bad that she gave the set for free or whatever so i'm like i wonder what design it is like i wonder if it's the same design that i tried because that one was like giving me a run for my money but at the end of the day it was kind of easy once you knew which way to do the lines so the girl um so tip top looked up the video and that was the same exact one that i literally had just practiced on the day before and i was going to edit that video but I didn't because I did not record enough of what y'all needed to see. So I had to re-record and I did it with this, but the design did not come out exactly the same. Like, I'm so mad, y'all. Like, I'm so mad that it didn't come out the same. I mean, it still looked cute, but you wouldn't think that it was supposed to be that design. So yeah, y'all, that is what it was supposed to be. I was supposed to be giving y'all a little tutorial of that. Um, I will still show y'all how I made the designs that I have on the fingernails if you are interested. Um, and I will talk you through how it is like really supposed to be or which way it's really supposed to go. And um, so, yeah. So I did want to talk to you all about um, the nail exam that I had to take. I had to do a theory exam. And if you don't know what a theory exam is, as far as for my school anyway, it is a test that you take on all the chapters that you have read since you have been in school so i started school in december um i had to read 22 chapters which is about 22 weeks because i read one chapter each week and took a test on each chapter each week um so that's how that went so from december until what january February, march april may until about may or june um, I was taking tests. I can't remember when exactly in December I started. I think I actually started class. I think I actually started class in January, but I can't really remember y'all. 
So, um, until about May or June, I was taking the classes and from May or June until now, yesterday, I have just been slack. <laughs> I was not, um, I did not go any further than the last test that I took. And that was only because like I had to pay bi-weekly and bi-weekly it was like $100. My total class amount is 2000 something, almost $3,000. Um, like, excuse me like 2600 I believe or 2700 something like that I don't know but basically rounded up to 300 three thousand dollars so I stopped with the payments for a little bit just because y'all y'all know I'm not working my wife is the only one who's working right now um and I'm we did that so that I could go to school and so that I could do YouTube full time so um so yeah so Sorry, y'all. I'm eating and trying to do this voiceover. I'm so hungry. Um, but uh, but OK, so, yeah, we're doing that. And so I took like two month break to just relax and not pay anything. So we took like a two month break of not paying for the classes. But for my school, you can go back whenever you want to or whatever. Pick up whenever you want to, as long as her class is in full and it's not too far behind. So. I, um, so I went back and, or I messaged my teacher and she's like, yeah, come in whenever you want to. You'll just have to, since you're completed with all the chapters, you'll just have to take a theory test. So I'm thinking, cool, what a breeze. So no, I, <laughs> I actually, um, read, I went on YouTube. I came up here and I looked up a lot of different videos that had to do with mill day, um, nail technician text, um, tests all that so i was doing the reviews up here and in this video i will link some um review test and some channels that helped me uh review for the exam however i will say that these links that i'm linking below are not going to be everything that you need to study if you have a mill day book if you don't have a mill day book you need to get one um if you are going reaching or trying to be a nail tech and get licensed, you will need the mill day book because that has all the information you're going to need for the exam. The stuff that you find on YouTube is not everything unless you know specifically what to look for, which you won't unless you read the book. So definitely be sure to get the book and um, make sure that you're reading. There were some questions like like questions that you that are in the first chapter that I did not review, which was dumb of me. I really studied so hard on diseases and disorders that it's like embedded in my brain now. Like I'll never forget the diseases or disorders, which are a huge part when it comes to taking these tests because they really want you to know that. But there are also other things that you really need to hit on. And there were questions like, um, when was the hot oil manicure treatment first introduced? And I didn't know that year. So things like that. Um, what did the Egyptians, uh, paint their nails with? And it was like, the choices were like camel blood, uh, henna paste and like two other things that I don't remember, but I had narrowed it down to henna paste and camel blood. And I think the answer is camel blood, but do not quote me on that because I'm not sure I marked henna paste, but after I turned it in, I thought about it and I was like, that doesn't even make sense because henna is usually for the skin, not the nails. So I don't know. I really don't know what that answer was, but I'm pretty sure that I got it wrong. Um, there are other questions like how many bones are in the body? How many muscles are in the body? Approximate. Uh, what else? There were so many questions, you guys. And I keep calling this book the Mill Day book, but it's called like My Lady or Mill Lady. I don't know how to pronounce that actual book name, but I keep pronouncing it wrong, y'all. I'm gonna link a picture of exactly what the book looks like right here in case you are wanting to purchase it. If I find it on Amazon, I will link that uh I will link that book below for you to all purchase it. Um, but hopefully I can find it because I want to make sure that it's the right one. I think there's like different versions of it. So I'm going to try to find the exact one that I have and link that one below for you all. But yeah, it, the test was 150 questions and it was literally on everything that I studied from chapter one to chapter 22. So there were about five questions for each chapter. I don't know if that adds up to be what I need it to be, but there were a couple questions from each chapter. 
um, in, on that whole entire test, which is what made it kind of lengthy and hard. Um, you definitely have to know each chapter and you definitely have to read and study it. Do not think that you're just going to skim by and read keywords and be able to do it. You really need to understand because a lot of the um, definitions for the words can be kind of confusing and a lot of them are similar because a lot of these names for these diseases or disorders are very similar. Once again, it never fails. I tell y'all this in every single video. It's like my wife knows when I'm doing a voiceover and has to call me. My wife calls me 20 times a day, y'all. Like, I cannot breathe. She cannot breathe without me, it feels like. Like, girl. Uh. But anyway. <laughs> Woo. And just a key note, when you are painting the nails, make sure that you are placing down the white first. Make sure that you are placing down the lightest color first and then the darkest color, just so that your white or whatever light color will not be contaminated. So dealing with these tests, you wanna make sure that you are having or noticing keywords in bigger words. Like when you get diseases, you're gonna see words like on chopology or whatever it's called. I'll link that word right here so you can see it. And that means bitten nails. And the way that I remember it is chop, chomp, like somebody's chomping or chopping up their food, biting on it. So bitten nails, that is how I relate them. There is another word that has the word mad in it. And I relate that to um, the nail separating or falling off because if you're mad at your boyfriend or girlfriend y'all are gonna probably separate and the relationship is just gonna fall off so that is how I relate my words to the definitions and it's just easier to remember them that way it's a great way of remembering um, for a test also you want to look at keywords like this non um, how the words end, if it ends with S-I-S, which is cis, um, stuff like that. You will know if it's a fungus, you will know if it's a disease, a bacteria. So those are just keywords that you want to look out for when you are studying and know what they mean. If you have to do further research and just look up stuff that's not even relating to nails and look up like what does this mean before a word or what does non mean before a word, those will give you key points. And if you do not know the answer at all on a test, it's going to be able to give you a good way of eliminate process of elimination. So even if you don't know the answer to something, you can probably eliminate a few choices with just how the word is like the word is um you can eliminate certain words just because you know that that has nothing to do parts of that word have nothing to do with what they're describing so those are just little key tips that i use on tests even though i do feel like i did not do too great on that test i it's just really up in the air like I said, she said that she looked over three of the pages while I was still there and she said I did not miss as many as I thought I missed. So I don't know if I'm just overthinking it like I usually do. A lot of the times I will think that I failed something and I passed, but I don't know y'all. So enough about the test, let's get into the nails. So as y'all know, I am doing a vertical ombre again. If you have not seen my last vertical ombre video, I will link that above for you all right here and you can see exactly how I do vertical ombre, but I am demonstrating it again in this video just without acrylic. So like I said, I'm only using polish. I'm using the Perfect White by Madame Glam. I'm also using this blue, it's number 11 from that kit that I got. Um, I will post that video up here for you all as well. If you wanna go purchase that kit, it is in this the description box of that that video um if you want to purchase this blue it came in a kit of i think 20 colors and i love this blue so i put down one layer and i cured it after i blended it and did the ombre excuse me now i am putting down another layer with the same colors on the same side and i am going to blend that again just how i did the first coat now the other nails, I did not do this. The other nails, I just did one coat cured. But this one, I'm gonna be doing a little different because I'm gonna be making a little like wave abstract type of design. And so I'm blending it right here. I'm just blending the colors together, you guys. And once again, this is over top of the same exact design that has already been cured. So whatever you do to this design is going to reveal what is underneath this wet paint. 
So I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna wet it a little bit, but then dry it off, and I'm just going to make a swirly line diagonally through it. Now the second one did not go as good as I wanted to, so I went back over it, and that is such a simple design, you guys. Like, that's how easy it is. It looks so, like you probably wouldn't have known how to do it if you don't see anybody do it, but it's super simple. Like, it's so simple, y'all. I promise you it's so simple super cute design i kind of wish i would have done it on all nails like i could do this vertical ombre with different designs literally on every set i'm gonna try not to like drown y'all with vertical ombre but ever since i did that first set with it it's just like i love it like it's so pretty and you can do it with multiple different colors um i thought that this blue and white went perfect together it was giving me like ocean vibes um so yeah if you follow me on instagram you probably saw it on instagram first if you do not follow me on instagram like why don't you follow me on instagram and why don't you have an instagram if you don't have an instagram make an instagram especially if you're a nail tech like why don't you have an instagram so anyway i'm gonna start doing giveaways on my instagram only um i'm also gonna do giveaways up here i don't want to say it like that i'm definitely going to be doing giveaways um, still up here always but I want to start doing a little more interacting a little more with my Instagram followers because I don't feel like I do that enough so yeah my Instagram name is the same name as it is up here nails to the hustle so if you want to go follow me make sure that you do so if you have not been paying attention to how I've been putting on the polish, I have been putting white on the on the right side and blue on the left side on one nail and then I've been putting blue on the right side and white on the left side on the other nail so i just been um switching back and forth between each nail so if you look at my nails that is why the ombre is on different sides of each nail now me and polish are not like the best friends when it comes to actually painting nails i'm just not a good painter so <laughs> It was definitely getting um, around my cuticle area. So I did take some acetone and wiped it clean on a lot of the nails, but sometimes the cuticle area still was not as smooth and flawless as I wanted it to be. So you will see towards the end after I'm done doing these silver designs that I will be putting some black rhinestones on my cuticle areas. This is how it came out, you guys. It was so cute. It was so cute after I was done and cured it all. This is how shiny it is. Look at how shiny they are without any top coat. This polish is like really, really good. For the price, it's super good. So like I said, go check that video out if y'all have not seen it. And if you are looking for some nice polishes, definitely go get that um, box. I actually have no code for it. It was really sent to me um, out of nowhere. I don't even know, the brand did not contact me. They just sent it to me um, through my email in, I mean, to my address in my, e in my description box. So they never contacted me personally. So I'm not really sure too much about uh, this brand, but y'all will hear everything about it um, and see the polishes and how pigmented they are if you watch that video. So right here, you guys, whew, we are attempting to do this design. Now, let me tell you how I feel about me doing this design and what I feel I did wrong. So first off, <sighs> okay, so I don't even know where to begin. There's so much that I did wrong. <laughs> now, I definitely made this design my own. It was nothing like how that girl did that design on that on that practice nail or that tip. So the two things, I can't even really, it's hard to describe it just because of how fast it's going, like the video. But if you can see um, just the lines from when I first started, I should have been doing one line over and then one line under on the same line going straight across. I'm gonna explain a little more in detail on the next finger and I'm gonna slow it down for you all so I can tell you exactly what I'm talking about because it's going so fast right now that it's not making sense. Now I do wanna mention, I also needed to not use such a thick polish or not even the polish i needed to wipe my brush off a little bit more and make thinner lines i feel like the girl who did 
that first um, set that we all seen made much thinner lines than what I'm making. So I feel like my lines were a little too thick and I don't know if it was my brush or if it was just the amount of polish I had on the brush. I don't know. Um, it also could have been just the type of polish that I was using. This was a very like thick polish and it was glitter. Um, they, everyone that I've seen has done black. So I feel like black is a more crisp looking color and it probably would have showed up a little better. So let me slow it down right here and explain a little further in detail. Okay, so the first thing that I did wrong, when you are making the dots, you wanna make one, two, three, four dots, and then you wanna do one, two, three, and then you wanna do like one, two, three, four again, or, I mean, that really doesn't matter, but that is what I saw her do in her video. So I was just trying to follow exactly what was done in her video. However, I kind of forgot while I was doing this and it wasn't easy for me to look back at the video because I am using my phone to record. So I could not follow it directly from what she was doing to my nail. And that's what kind of messed me up as well. I also feel like this works better on wider nails. So like the tips that I've been seeing are either a little wider or a little longer and they are able to put um, bigger spaces in between of the dots. I also feel like I should have used um, a smaller dotting tool to get smaller dots. I feel like that would have helped a lot. Then how I'm connecting the lines, they're so thick. Her lines were not this thick. Her lines were a lot thinner. Um, I also feel like they were spaced out maybe a little more and I feel like some of my lines were not going in the, the right direction. Um, so those were just, I just want to slow that part down for you just so you could see exactly what I'm talking about. And like I said, I cannot give you a full on tutorial of like the right way to do this because obviously I did not do it like super correctly but if you are just looking for something to look similar to it then this you can clearly just go ahead and do this design if you would like to it did not come out bad but if you knew what to look for and if you knew how it was supposed to look then you would look at mine and be like oh no mm -mm, no ma'am but if you are just looking at it and you don't know what you're supposed to be looking for or if you if you didn't know you know like how it actually is supposed to look then you would probably think that this this um these lines were came out pretty cool so it's all in perception it's just definitely a perception thing and if you've seen what the real thing looks like then you would know that this is wrong but this is one of those things where it's like you can't you can't miss it if you never had it so <laughs> If you had never seen that design that I showed you in the beginning of this video, then you would think that these lines were supposed to be like this. So I did go ahead and show you all how they looked after and they were looking okay to me. I was okay with it. It was kind of giving like fishtail almost like a fishnet design. Um, and that's a whole nother tutorial to give. I don't even have any fishnet here with me, I don't think, but there are multiple ways to do that design. And I see a lot of people do it. I've never done it, um, but it's giving that just with paint. So now I'm just going to make this um, outline design on my pinky finger because I didn't really wanna do any more of those little abstract lines or fishtail lines, whatever you wanna call them. Um, it just didn't go with the pinky finger. So I wanted to do something a little simple. And I knew that I was going to um, to be putting some rhinestones on it. And I wanted to make it different than the middle finger. I really wanted the middle finger to stand out. So um, right here, remember when I said the cuticles were a little bit messed up. So I'm going to just cover up my mess ups with some rhinestone beads now i don't always do this i do love a cuticle bead anyway even if it's perfect but these needed it today so i went ahead and i'm using my beetles rhinestone um nail glue now when i am um i have some i bought some zule glue but i bought another zule glue um, that is coming in the mail and I want to open them all up with you all. So I'm waiting for that second one to get here and then I will open it all up. I also bought an acrylic powder from her and it's this really pretty color. I'm going to um, swatch that for you all as well and use it on a set as soon as I get it. Um, it should be here next week, so I'll probably do a video with that. I finally got me some Zule Blingu adhesive and I really needed it because... 
when I cured these stones, not on these two fingers, but when I cured these stones on my thumb and took it out the light, they moved, you guys. So they came out crooked and I was just not about to redo it for this video. So I'm gonna show you all exactly what I mean. If it's in the video, I don't know if I put it in the ending videos where um, where I show all the nails, but y'all will see what I'm talking about. It's on the thumb. It's gonna be on the thumb, that little space right there at the bottom. You will see one of the stones, like I guess slid a little bit when I put it in the light. So when you are using um, rhinestone glue gel like this, it is not going to cure and stay still until you put it in the light. So what that means is if you are putting like too much of the gel, it is going to be easy. It's going to slide a little more easily than if you did not put so much. So I put way too much gel on the nail and that's why it was sliding so much. I did wipe away a little bit, but it was still a lot. And at this point, I could not get most of it off because the rhinestones were already down. So just be mindful of that when you are using um, rhinestone glue that it's going to slip and slide until you cure it. And that is why I have invested now in some Zule bling glue so that it can dry a little faster and I do not have to worry about that. So this is what they're looking like without any polish, you guys. This is without any polish. Like how shiny are they? Isn't that crazy? I thought that was so wild to me how the nails were so shiny without a top coat like the polish was just crazy so i'm gonna try a matte coat and i wanted y'all to see the difference in what the matte looked like versus the shiny of course if you've seen the thumbnail in my video on instagram i went with shiny but i did want to show you what it would look like matte and it was pretty cool um i didn't do the other four fingers i was just wondering what it would look like so I did end up going back over it with top coats, um, a glossy top coat for the remainder of the nails. And yeah, that was pretty much all I did, you guys. This top coat is okay. It's not as shiny as I would like it to be. Of course, it was. Um, it looked very shiny only because the nail polish underneath was already super shiny. So I didn't really need too much of a crazy shiny gloss anyway. Um, so yeah, y'all, I hope y'all enjoy this video. Let me know down below if you are in nail class or nail school and you are trying to be a licensed nail tech. I want to know because I'm thinking about posting some videos for you all having to do with some education videos. Um, so let me know down below if you're in school, have you already graduated from school? How long have you been in nail tech? I really, really want to know, like, I like to know about y'all. I like to know what y'all are doing in life. Um, what do you do? What do you do for a job if you are not a nail tech? Do you just watch these for fun? Is it just a hobby? So let me know. Uh, let me know down below. Um, this right here is my cuticle oil pen. Y'all, it smells so good. I wish y'all could smell it. Like, I really wish y'all could smell this cuticle oil. If you have not purchased any cuticle oil from me, make sure you go on my website. My website is always in the description box. I have not switched it over to Shopify yet. So everything is still available. What is Whatever is on my website it is uh, readily available to you all. But definitely go ahead and get some cuticle oil pens. They're like, you can't mess with them. And they last a really, really long time, you guys. So yeah, you guys, that is all I have for you today. If you wanna stay tuned for the little bloopers of while I was doing this little, this nail set and my wife was cussing me out about watching a show without her, you guys, then you can stay tuned for that. But otherwise, I will see y'all in the next video. I love y'all so much, Mwah. bye. Reason why you shouldn't be mad because all we're gonna do is watch it over again. Like anything else. Whatever. She just wanna give me the sloppy seconds. Oh, I'm gonna just watch it over again. But the moment I try to watch something that I already seen with her, she'd be like, I don't wanna watch something that you already watched. I didn't like the beginning. It was confusing me. I haven't finished it. She said you gotta pay attention. I know, everybody says you have to pay attention, but I wasn't able to pay attention. Cause I was. Too busy being a betrayer. I know they were switching places and stuff.